Good evening and happy midweek, everyone. Happy midweek. Happy midweek, Sister Memory. Happy midweek, Brother Ronel, and happy midweek. I am blessed to worship the Lord together with you this evening. In the middle of this week, that testify how the Lord had blessed us in the middle of this week, and we are now here gathered to render Him the most genuine worship that we could. We would like to praise God that despite of our busyness, as you all know, we are in the middle of our midterm exam, but still you choose to come here to worship our living God. And let me assure you, my fellow students, that your coming here would not be in vain because the Bible clearly um, saying that for those who seek first his kingdom, okay, all those things will be added to those who seek God first. And if you are needing wisdom, strength, I know that God are willing to give all these things um, for us because we seek Him first. Amen. I strongly agree with that, Brother Ronel. Especially this week is our exam week. And this week is also our, our Sally Week, Student Association of Literature Evangelist Week. So this midweek's emphasis is about the testimonies that our brothers will be sharing with us on how our living God, the ruler of the whole universe, had authored the literature ministry and how it had been a blessing to their lives, even molding characters, especially students. And while God had been molding our characters, He is using us simultaneously to reach other peoples, to fix and mend broken hearts. So in behalf of the Student Association of Literature Evangelists, we would like to welcome you all for this special midweek. And we also want to acknowledge the presence of our NPUC Publishing Director. And before we sit down, I want you to listen very carefully in this message from the book of Psalms, chapter 31, verse 24. It says, Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all you that hope in the Lord. May God bless us all as we worship him.
pleasant evening to everyone. Brothers and sisters, if I were to write my autobiography, I would also highlight my very own experience when once I participated as a e literature evangelist way back in 1993 as part of the requirements of our course in College of Theology, I joined the literature evangelist uh, evangelism, a group of students who were assigned in Longapo, in Subic, and in Pampanga. And I would say that these two months of canvassing work, I would say, is one of the most memorable experiences that I had. I would even describe it as 5H. That particular work was the hardest. It was the highest calling. It was the happiest calling. It was also a humblest calling. And I would say also that those, those two months that I was involved in the literature evangelism, I experienced in that two months the most number of prayers I had in my life. I was confident at the, at the beginning because I thought anyway we'll be assigned in Subic Sambales and that was that is my place actually that I stayed there for four years because I studied my high school years in that particular place so I would say if ever I would not make any sale I still have a house or a home to go to so that I could survive for a day However, when we were transferred to Lubao, Pampanga, this is where the challenge came. And so I had to pray almost every time. I don't know how many times I prayed, but countless were the times that I prayed to God. From the time we wake up in the morning, including, of course, the prayers before the meal, the prayers during the worship, the prayers before we leave the house where we stayed, and each houses we visited, we had to pray even if we were denied entrance. And once we were successful in getting inside the house, we would introduce ourselves, and before leaving the house, we would pray again for the residents. And every time we visit different residences, we had to pray. When we go back to our, our quarters, we have to pray again. And then in the afternoon, during worship time, we have to pray. And even in the middle of the night, we have to pray once more. Following all the list that we had for our clients and our customers. We have to pray not only for our customers, but even for the books that they will make a way into the hearts of the people that we meet along the way. Another thing that I can remember about canvassing is that in 1991, before I knew PUC, after graduation from high school, I was only thinking of studying two-year course, like electronics, refrigeration, anything that is, that is easy to finish, any vocational course, because I would like to work immediately so that I can help my, my other siblings. However, in the summer of 1991, a group of students obviously coming from Philippine Union College at that time, were sent and were assigned in Alongapo City. 
I can no longer remember all their names and their faces. But their testimonies, when, when I listen to the church in Longapo, their testimonies about the school, about this school, this PUC and now AUP, their testimonies about their struggles and their successes as a working student somehow made an etch in my mind. It inspired me. It was only my first time to hear that we had a Seventh-day Adventist school. I never knew about our school here in Silang. It was all the while I studied only in public school and then in Catholic school. But when I heard about a particular program that is offered in this school, I got interested. And so together with my, th my two other friends, at the summertime, after the, uh, me meeting these canvassers, these students, literature evangelists, we decided to come to PUC to apply for work at the same time to study. Three of us decided to study here as a working student. And I keep thinking about this, that if I did not meet any group of literature evangelists who introduced me PUC, I could not say that I would be here tonight. I could not say that my seven years of studying in this university became possible. And I could not say also that after graduating from this university, I would also be given a chance to work in the same institution. So I give credit to the group of young people who participated and may not, may did not know that somehow they inspired me when they also gave their testimonies in that particular church in the Longapo that made me decide to come here and study and finish my course. And so my fellow literature evangelists right now, the students who are involved right now, and to those of you who had an experience of joining this worthy and holy calling, do not belittle the opportunity given to you to participate because you would not know that God may be using your experience and your testimony to touch the lives of other young people, that they may be inspired to come and study in this institution as well. If not only studying here, maybe some other opportunities for them to know the Lord. You know, my studying here in this university was not only to finish my course, but it was also my own quest of who God is in my life. My study of theology was not only to finish the course and work, but for me, it was the discovery of who God is in my life. And up to this time, I still cherish this two months experience that I had in the canvassing work. Today, whenever I meet students, come visit me in, in our quarters, in our place, I would entertain them. If I'm not able to buy any expensive books or any, any books that I can afford, I would always offer them a prayer and encourage them. Or at least I would give them some, some testimonies and encourage them because there must be a very good reason why they were involved in such ministry. Of course, aside from these spiritual experiences, it is also a character development and there are also monetary benefits. At the end of two months, I also reached the sale about 20,000 plus and of course, it helped me in my tuition fees in the college. Beloved brothers and sisters and to all of you who are participating right now in this canvassing work this coming summer, please remember that this is an opportunity for each one of you to be used by the Lord in any way to touch the lives of other people. You may not see immediately the fruit of your labor, but the Lord knows 
that you have been used as an instrument to touch the lives of other people. Go and spread the good news, not only with your testimonies, but the testimonies of the books written, inspired by the Holy Spirit. God bless us, and may the Lord touch also your lives to participate in any of these activities. Good evening and happy midweek to everyone. Happy midweek to all of you. Uh, Sir Jorwell, allow me to say something about the two of us. Okay? So, Sir Jorwell and I both live for a time in the same province or maybe in the same city. We, we both came from Olongapu City. Our lives have crossed when we were teenagers back then. Actually, Sir Jerwell was is just a bit younger than I. Mga one year lang, di ba sir? He he's he's about. Now, to be honest, I'm I'm about three or four years older than him. Our lives have crossed and crisscrossed in so many ways. But one of those crossings is the literature ministry. We were both at the same place. I mean, we can bus and work as literature evangelists in the same place and also at the same time. Let me share to you tonight my personal testimony, how the literature ministry shaped my life. I do feel small, not just physically small, as you can see. I do feel small tonight in comparison to God's many faithful servants who have served in the past and to those who are still serving today, who are still serving our master faithfully. My personal prayer and humbly, I would like to tell you this. Tonight, at least, you can find a little spiritual inspiration from my life story or from my testimony. And also, it is my wish and my purpose that tonight we will lift up the importance of the publishing ministry once again. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God has a wonderful, a wonderful plan for his people. He has a plan for you and me, a plan beyond and much better than our wildest dreams. After graduating from high school at Central Luzon Adventist Academy, I immediately came to PUC, now AUP, in the summer of 1987. I have nothing but a dream, a childhood dream I held in my heart. I want to become a medical doctor. During the first semester, while working as a farmhand, I enrolled as a medical technology student. Those were exciting days. I was in the right place, the best place that I could be. To be in PUC was a dream, a dream come true. It was like heaven to me. I was full of beautiful dreams. I was wide-eyed, dreamy, and full of high ideals. But reality struck. At the end of my first semester, I was in debt. Marami na akong utang. I decided to work full-time during the second semester to earn enough so I could enroll again by the next school year. Unexpectedly, my mother came to visit me and realized my financial problem. Regardless of my protest, my parents decided to take me home. Maybe they thought it would take me forever to earn a medical degree or even, or any college degree, 
as a working student. They had better plans, so they thought. As it turned out, God had a better plan. Summer of 1998 came. I was bored, disillusioned for months of doing nothing but chores at home. Fortunately, a batch of PUC students came for the Summer Student Literature Ministry Scholarship Program at Olongapo City. My friends and I, the local church boys, were excited to join. It was a promising summer of meeting new friends, adventure, social nights, and lots of fun. It was indeed, and much more. At first, I was hesitant of joining because I was terribly shy and afraid of meeting people. The thought of going house to house and selling books terrified me. But my father encouraged and promised to give me daily allowances if I join. The allowances convinced me, I guess, because I joined finally. At the end of summer, after two months of hard work, I tasted success. I sold two books, two Healing Wonders of Herbs books. Not much, really, but it was the beginning of my literature evangelism adventure. After that memorable summer, I joined a group of full-time colporteurs working in the towns of Sambales. For two years, I worked as a full-time literature evangelist. Then I came back to PUC once again. Still wide-eyed, dreamy, and full of high ideals, but this time with a, lit, with a little sense of reality and a different educational goal to finish a theology degree and serve as a pastor. The literature ministry was instrumental in shaping my personality and much more, my vocation. I learned better social skills, salesmanship, and most of all, it developed in me a passion for the gospel ministry. As a literature evangelist visiting hundreds of homes and meeting different people, I discovered something. People are not only afflicted with a lot of physical ailments and diseases, but also with something more sinister and deadly. We possess a darkness, a tendency to evil that could destroy our lives and the lives of others as well. The Bible calls it the flesh, or simply sin. We need the power beyond ourselves to overcome it. We need something, someone to save us from sin and from ourselves. We need a message that will help us to live a life full of meaning, a life of faith, hope, and love. A life that will truly give us real and lasting happiness. A life that will give us the assurance of forever. We usually hear that there is no forever, but let me tell you tonight, there is forever. <laughs> Amen. As I understand it now, God called me to be a pastor through the literature ministry. The literature ministry also helped me understand better God's providence, God's providential guidance. Allow me to continue my story. I spent almost every summer that I was a student of PUC in literature evangelism. When I went back to PUC, after every summer, I had new shoes and clothes and pocket money. In addition to the scholarship fund awarded to student literature evangelist, this greatly helped upset my financial obligations. Many deserving working students have benefited much through the student literature evangelism scholarship program. I was one of them. I had many fascinating and memorable experiences as a literature evangelist. 
I could not tell you everything tonight. I did experience a lot of discouraging moments, countless and painful rejections, and harrowing escapes. But to top it all, I had more of those encouraging moments, and one that greatly strengthened my faith in God and His providential leading. One summer, I was out again working as a student literature evangelist. My companion, I, my companion and I were working house to house in the hilly portion of Bolongapo City, maybe at East Tapinak or in the, in the Gordon Heights. No one would let us in, and we could not close a sales presentation. It was almost 10 o'clock in the morning, and still we hadn't made a sale. We came into a gated compound. The house was a little far from the gate. We pressed the doorbell, knocked on the gate, and called Taupo. We did it repeatedly until a middle-aged woman came out of the house and asked us about our intentions. We were trained not to raise our voice when, ans when answering a client who is far from the gate. So, we intentionally lowered our voices. She came close and told us she was in a hurry. We breezed through our presentation and showed her our books. She was particularly interested in our recipe books. At last, she opened the gate and allowed us in. We closed the sale inside her home. At the end of the presentation, she offered us a drink. Of course, we did not accept it. <laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a joke. We did, of course, accept it. She went into the kitchen and came back with a pitcher, pitcher of juice, pineapple juice, and a tray with a plate of crackers and biscuits and some platters and glasses. She, she set all this before us in the sala and then asked, where is your other companion? It was then that we noticed she had set before us three platters and three glasses. Where is the other one? She asked. The tall guy wearing white. Of course, obviously, we were not that one, that guy, because both of us were short. She asked again. At first, we tried to explain that there were just two of us. Then we remember the stories of our angels accompanied literature evangelists. We shivered, not because it was cold, but because of the thought. Our hairs stood on its end. We stopped explaining and told her he just left to meet an important appointment while she was in the kitchen. After praying for her, we left the home in high spirits. We were amazed, greatly amazed and happy. We, had, we even had a little fun while going back to our quarters. We kidded each other about whose guardian angel was he. He was either my guardian angel or my companions. Maybe neither. Back then, we did not take it that seriously. We reasoned, perhaps, she just made an apparent mistake. A single story could not make a serious case. I will concede. But there are other stories, real-life experiences of how angels help God's faithful literature evangelist. This could not be easily dismissed. Truly, God guides and provides for his faithful children. The liter literature ministry helps support my college education. And best of all, through the literature ministry, I become a better person, a better Christian. There are many ways and programs we can do to lead others to Jesus, but nothing can equal nor substitute for personal ministry. 
through the publishing ministry, we can do it. We can do personal ministry and more. I can personally attest and introduce you to some individuals, to some individuals I've met through the, liter through the liter literature ministry who, by the grace of God, have now given their lives to Jesus and have chosen to become members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Modern technology has made possible the saturation of society with publications and other media information. Some of our church leaders and members are asking, does the church still need the publishing ministry today? My answer is yes. Yes, in bold letters for emphasis. Consider again the following counsel from the inspired pen of Ellen White. The canvassing work properly conducted is missionary work of the highest order, and it is as good and successful a method as can be employed for placing before the people the important truths for this time. Colfortio Ministry, page 6. My brothers and sisters, and to those who are much younger than I, our students here at AUP, let me tell you once again, without doubt, the liter literature ministry, rightly conducted, can help shape a life, shape your life and mind for the better and for the best. God bless us all. I am uh, very much inspired with the uh, living testimonies given by our pastors here in the campus. And uh, I believe that those experiences that uh, they have will be a great reminder for us as students to become bold and enthusiastic when it comes to joining the publishing ministry. Did you ever know that uh, since the beginning or existence of the church that was 1863. Before the existence of the church, the publishing program was already in progress. That was 1848. God gave this vision to Ellen G. White in order for the church to make manifest on how to scatter the light that given to the church in order to make progress about the proclamation of the gospel. In this evening, my friend, I would like to mind you for the great task given to the church and for its student here in the campus that the publishing work will be a great blessing to you when you join and experience the boldness of scattering the printed page. This afternoon, I was touched with the direction given by the GC Publishing Director by the name of Pastor uh, Almer Maruni. And he shared the seventh focus of uh, our ministry. Number one, the publishing department wants to recruit young, passionate literature student literature evangelists for the publishing work. Then right after that, we will do a massive recruiting program all throughout the, all throughout the North Philippine Union Conference, including universities, colleges, and academies, including our churches. Then after a massive training program, 
then uh, we will begin to train them and equip them to become faithful, not only faithful in the parlance of studying the theories, but most likely the theory must be put into practice. Then uh, number four, the Philippine Publishing House published appropriate books intended for the summer program for all literature evangelists who wants to join this publishing ministry. Then number five, okay, every student will be given a goal, a sales goal for them to follow in order for them to acquire their scholarship that uh, will be given to them. Then the NPUC will define the scholarship plan and after that, all nature of the work must focus on mission. This afternoon, while I opened my uh, laptop, I was deeply challenged and moved by the thing that popped up on my computer. And I was frightened and afraid because Devil, the devil himself published his own gospel. And the title of the book is The Gospel of Satan with the commentaries. And this gospel of Satan, he polluted the minds of every young people all throughout the world. And that is why Ellen G. White was given a vision in order for all students here at the Adventist University of the Philippines to join and participate boldly in the program that had been planned and initiated by God himself. According to the book of John, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 2, the passage tells us that the devil has gone down to you he is filled with fury because he knows, not these words, my friend, he knows that his time is short. Well, John reminded us that the devil knows his time, and his time is very short. His time is intended for the proclamation of devilous gospel. And he even uses, my friend, literature to blind young people about the truth. But God himself knows about these things. That is why he, he, initiated, he initiated this program, the publishing ministry. This institution taught us about the three angels' message. But we forgot the other angel of Revelation 18, verse 1, okay? The simple presentation that I would like to present with you this evening, my friends, it is entitled, The Other Angel. In the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 1, according from the mouth of prophet John Revelator, he said, I saw another angel come down from heaven. Notice this. Okay. Having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice. The passage tells us that the angel came down from heaven and he possessed great power. And the very question is, who is that other angel in the book of Revelation chapter 18 verse 1? This angel has a mission. His mission is to lighten the earth with his glory. And he cried with a strong voice. That is strong voice, it means he has a mission to do and he has a message to tell. For us to be accomplished, my friends. This passage accomplished 
when Prophet Ellen G. White received this vision and Testimonies for the Church, Volume 7, page 139 up to 140. And Prophet Ellen G. White explicitly said, and in a large degree, notice this, my friend, my young people, in a large degree, true, this is the, the accomplishment or the fulfillment of Revelation 18, verse 1. Through our publishing houses is to be accomplished the work of that other angel of Revelation 18, verse 1, who comes down from heaven with great power and who lightens the earth with his glory. The humble beginning of the Seventh-day Adventists came from the publishing ministry. The word use in Liberation chapter 18, verse 1, are the same message given by Ellen G. White. Every student, every young people should represent the work of that other angel. Twice given this message by Prophet Chan Revelator, including our end time prophet, Ellen G. White. I had an experience to interview one of the students who experienced to join the publishing ministry in Northeast Luzon Adventist College by the name of Bia Amor Agustin. She came from a well-to-do family, but she had a passion in, his heart, in her heart to join the publishing ministry. And she told me this message when I, when I interviewed her during that time. She told me, life is too short to stay at home while others are thirsty and hungry about the word of God. Who says amen for that? I would like to relate you, to you two messages that comes from the book of Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. First, sub-message. The angel's message is aggressive. Why aggressive? Ellen G. White gave this statement in relation to the aggressiveness of the th of that other angel's message in Revelation 18, verse 1. Ellen G. White foretold that there are tremendous issues are before us. Let our, pres let, let, let our prayers ascend to God. Then let us work in harmony with our prayers. Let nothing lessen the force of the truth for this time. The present truth is to be our burden. We have branded with many issues, my friends, all throughout the world, including here in the Philippines. The issue of drug, the issue of the downfall of morality, the issue of dysfunctional families, and the issue even destructive literatures is scattered all throughout the world, my friends. But God wants you to share good literature that will save lives. Amen. I had this uh, story given by the first non-Adventist student who joined the publishing ministry that was 2015 by the name of Renalyn Fuentes. He joined the publishing ministry in Baisa Adventist Academy by the leadership of Michael Estalita. Did you know Michael Estalita? You know Michael Estalita is one of the great accountant in Makati. He fully blessed by God because he remained always faithful in serving him during those summer. That is why Michael Estalita is one of the best accountant in Makati. This young student, Renalyn Puentes, 
I had also the privilege to interview her. She given me this statement and she told me, Pastor, I am convinced that there is a mission work in the publishing. But she is not an Adventist. He has, she, she, uh, uh, during that time, she was a Catholic. But that was March 18, 2015. He received the Adventist faith through baptism, March 28, or March 18, I should say, 2015. Ellen G. White reminded us in Review in Herald, May 20, May 20 1890. Listen about this statement, my friends. Students are to offer to God nothing less than your best. Nothing less than your best. You do your best for him, for the glory of his name. Students should do better work as you put into practice what you learn. Amen? Huh? We must put into practice those theories that we have understand or understood in this class or in this institution, I should say. Without doing that, all theories, all theories that you have experienced during your time here in Adventist University will be in vain without putting into practice. The second message that I would like to relate with you, the angel has a powerful Mission. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, page 60 and page 16. Our mission is a life and death message. We are to present it in all its telling force. Notice this, my dear young people. You have possessed with the energy. You have possessed with talents. You have possessed with gifts. You have possessed with many wisdoms that are given to you through the impartation of the Holy Spirit. But this wisdom that was given to you by God himself must be put into practice. We will continue. Then the Lord will make it effectual. It is our privilege to expect, or expect, I should say, large things. Even the demonstration of the Spirit of God, this is the power that will convict and convert the soul. Amen. The Stemmers for the Church, Volume 6, page 330. If students will do this, combining the work of sealing books with personal labor, with the people, their talent will increase by exercise, which they could not be possibly learned in the school. When I read this quotation coming from the writings of Ellen G. White, this will be my guiding principles when I was, was a student in Northern Luzon Adventist College. Every summer I joined the publishing ministry in order to support my study in that institution. But the Lord is really good and bless me. To close this message, I would like to relate with you with this simple story. I was invited to conduct a publishing rally in La Satin, Tarlac City. After my presentation during that Sabbath day, I made an appeal to those people who listen about the Word of God and to those who are being enlightened about the message. My tears flows out of my eyes because no one, no one could, uh, who could brave to participate or no one who could join, I should say, to participate in that program that we have made in that place. But there is a man who wants to join. But I would like to, I would like, I would like to, I would not to accept. I would, I, it is in my heart, there is a hesitation for me to accept that man. Because he was a mongoloid. 
But the Holy Spirit reminded me, Pastor Abe, this experience has a message for you to tell. And I threw it back, the question, to those who listen. And I said, though this man is a mongoloid, but he understood clearly the mission and the message of the Seventh-day Adventists. Would you like to become a mongoloid first before you could decide to become a literature evangelist? That was a very, very challenging statement that I, I was given to them during that time. And the mongoloid told me, Pastor Abe, I want to join the canvassing work just as I am. Just as I am, Pastor, I would like to join the canvassing work. Students here in the university, we are very much talented when we talk about theories and practices. But the question is, how could you use that talent that given to you by God himself? By joining the canvassing work, I know that that, that gift will be increased by exercise. Just join. Just accept the challenge that comes from the Holy Spirit. And God will equip you encourage you and inspire you to become a useful student literature evangelist one of these days. May the Lord bless you, my friend. For the response to the message, let, let's all stand and sing the Bookman Rally song. To proclaim the Advent story, there's a missionary band composed of greatest bookman who march into the land in search of souls. Father, 
We bring it back in honor and glory to the throne and wisdom that you have imparted to each and every one of us this evening. Thank you, Father God, for the impartation of the Holy Spirit will move the hearts of young people here in the university for them to accept the challenge in participating in the gospel work, most likely in the publishing ministry. You have given them wisdom and talents, O Lord. But this wisdom will become useful if they willingly join boldly and enthusiastically in the publishing ministry. Make it a meaningful in their hearts, O Father God, that doing missionary work is part of their calling, most likely, O Father, ensuring the printed page into every four corners of the earth. Thank you so much that you could also use these teachers, professors in this university to enlighten these people, O Holy Father, to become more faithful to you, to become obedient to your laws and precepts, that these commandments of Holy Father will be a guiding principles for them to remain faithful until the time or until the end time of days. As we depart in this place of Holy Father, may the wisdom and empowerment of the Holy Spirit be made manifest in our hearts. Thank you so much also that you could forgive us from all our trespasses that we have committed against you. We ask all these things in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ.